to be here with all of you, and particularly our governor, Martin O'Malley, and the senator, uh, Senator Vernon Jones Rodwell, and uh, members of my team, my administration, as well as the governor's team. I want to thank Mark for hosting this event and being a valuable partner as we strive to grow Baltimore together. I also want to thank the members of the delegation, which uh, the senator is representing, the, uh, the delegation in the Maryland General Assembly for making today possible. It's exciting to be here to talk to you about funding for workforce training. That's why I'm so glad to have Karen Sitnik here from the Mayor's Office of Employment Development. Something that is so crucial for our city. Creating opportunities like this is essential in achieving our goal of growing Baltimore by 10,000 families over the next decade. EARN will help provide job training for local residents, giving them the advantage when it comes to competing for good jobs that lead to stable careers. I frequently hear from businesses about the need for training that's developed specifically to meet the needs of their uh, specific industry. So it's essential that we listen to these employers and respond in the most effective and efficient way. Because EARN is an industry-driven initiative, the training will certainly address the most important components for, job, for successful job matching. You can be assured that Baltimore City will apply for funding through EARN to give our local job seekers every opportunity to improve their qualification for jobs in a variety of industries, including manufacturing. I had a great time. Uh, Governor, we were hosting uh, a manufacturing conference and had students there, and they did. They showed me your 3D um, face, the, <laughs> not that 3D face, but the, the one that they created, the computer generated, and they they told me that you were so eager to do it that I had to do it as well. So did you get a 3D face? Yeah. All right. But. <laughs> I think it's different for guys, but um, so it just, the spark that you could see, uh, that there's a, the, the students are excited about the opportunities for manufacturing and uh, the employers in the region know that this, that this region, Baltimore City in the state of Maryland, is ripe for talent. Uh, for the manufacturing industry. So we know that manufacturing, like many other industries, requires a specific set of skills, uh, different uh, from what was needed a few years ago, and Mark would probably tell you a few months ago, we can't afford to leave positions unfilled due, uh, due to an unprepared workforce. At the same time, residents deserve an opportunity to be trained for jobs of today and jobs of the future, and EARN is a significant part of meeting that obje objective. It's a great example of how government and industry can work together to, towards a mutually beneficial result. Baltimore City is ready to provide these opportunities through innovative state funding. As illustrated by EARN, we know that businesses have a stake in developing the new workforce to meet their needs. So I want to thank Governor O'Malley for his advocacy on the workforce development through this important bill. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. And I, before I leave, say thank you very much, Governor, for being a leader in job creation thank you, in, in this state and in the, in the nation. And I'm looking forward to creating more of those jobs right here in Baltimore. Good, oh. good, thank good you. Mayor. Thank, thank you, you Mayor. very much. Thanks, Mayor. mayor, thanks very, very much for being here. And thank you for your great uh, talented people in the city like Karen Sitnik. Let me ask uh, Mark Rice if uh, Mark, uh, now that you're uh, battle ready with your coat off, uh, you want to come up and why don't you tell us a little bit about MAPC? And uh, we thank members of the media for being here. Yeah. Well, thank you, Governor. Thanks for hosting this and for actually passing the legislation. It's really important to us. So we are a 55-person employee-owned company. Uh, so the people behind me are the employee owners. Uh, we've grown from a one-person company to a 50-person company here in Maryland, and it's through the hard work of the people behind me. And we manufacture things for the U.S. Navy. We sell things around the world. Uh, we are a technology-based company, so we tend to take technology and turn it into a product, try and move that product into production. 
So the urn legislation is really key to us because it provides the training opportunity for us to take our skilled workers and keep them current, move them up to new levels of skills, things like robotic welding, advanced CNC machining, uh, and the, the, the technologies of the future that will let us compete around the world because we add, add much more value per labor hour to our products through automation. So, that's very cool. Yeah. Mark, thank you. Thank and you. some of, the, of you were walking with us as we took the tour, and we had the opportunity to meet a lot of talented people, including a pipeline of talent coming from our high schools, and uh, heard about the, the way, Mark, that you value that most important asset that we have as Marylanders. Uh, namely the talents, the skills, the innovative capacity of our workforce. We have a terrific workforce in our state, but technology and innovation is happening at such a pace, especially when it comes to advanced manufacturing, that we can't continue to do things in the old, slow, hierarchical, bureaucratic way where you create a program, you study how you put it together at the local college for years and years and years, then maybe people get into it if we didn't cut the career counselors in the high schools to let people know. So we're flipping that script. And instead of looking at workforce as just uh, development as another line item that goes to this or that bureaucracy or this or that school, we're saying, wait a minute. If it's happening so quickly, and if there are people in this field that are already doing it, and if the employers who are looking for talented and skilled people know what skills they have most in demand, then why don't we let our workforce efforts be driven by the sector that has the jobs to fill? So that's why this EARN bill is pretty new for us as a state but it is the wave of the future when it comes to workforce development. Staying inside the turning radius, if you will, of the new technologies and the new skills allows us then to create near these centers of innovation uh, that uh, abound here in our state, allows us to create not only uh, you know, the new ideas, but the new products. And with those new products, the ability to make things, the robotics, uh, revolution that is sweeping our country, it's really an opportunity if we can stay up on the, the skills and move faster than uh, our competitors, then our people will get better jobs. Our people will unlock the capacity for employers to create even more jobs and to do that here rather than someplace else. So the efforts that we have been uh, driving towards uh, innovation and security, innovation and sustainability, innovations in how, and innovations in how we deliver better and higher and more market relevant skills to our people. These are all of the things that build an innovation economy in our state. U.S. Chamber of Commerce named Maryland number one state in America for two years in a row in innovation and entrepreneurship. And you see it here at MAPC. You see it here in the talents of this workforce and you see it in the potential of this earned bill. Uh, a lot of times things start small to get them in the budget, but then, uh, but then we hope with uh, uh, further uh, leadership and driven by the private sector that we're going to be able to do more and more to allocate these dollars with great workforce development offices like the one that Karen Sitnik runs here in the city of Baltimore to create more jobs and more opportunity. The big challenge of our time is how we expand middle-class opportunity to more people. Uh, it won't happen by itself. It's only going to happen through innovations in what we make and also in the skills required to make those things. So with that, let me turn it over to uh, uh, Secretary um, Leonard Howey, who is our Secretary of Labor. We also call him the Secretary of Labor Licensing and Regulation, but those are a lot of words. We should retitle you. We should call you... This yeah, is please, please, please. Leonard is the Secretary of Highly Skilled Labor. Oh. There, there we go. Thank you, Thank you, Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is a great day. Uh, as the governor said, the Department of Labor Licensing and Regulation um, is the agency charged with implementing EARN. We are so proud of EARN. It was truly a collaborative process between uh, the executive branch, legislative branch, our nonprofit partners. 
um, businesses, our educators. Uh, we, we really took serious the mission of doing everything we can to close the skills gap that we have. And if you heard Mark talk um, on, on our tour, it was clear that there are a lot of jobs out there, a lot of jobs that he has here, a lot of need that are going unfilled right now in anticipation of some of the advanced skills that his staff is going to need over time to put forth a training initiative that's comprehensive and focused enough to, uh, to provide the detailed training that's needed to move us to the, uh, to the jobs that are required in the 21st century. Um, in Maryland, I think we, we, we proudly say that we not only like to make it first or make it in America as the national um, uh, model is out there, but we also recognize the need to make it in Maryland as well. And initiatives like EARN um, uh, really, put the, uh, really put the juice behind a lot of our, our efforts, a lot of our actions to ensure that we have the training, uh, the, the, the workforce that we need to move forward. Now, as the months go on, uh, we will have uh, far more detail coming out about EARN and, and how one applies for it. But just real briefly, at its core, it's a strategic model that requires the formation of partnerships. And again, I'll go back to what Mark said. He, he acknowledged that um, he, he has the people in the pipeline, but he needs training partners. He needs some funding partners. He needs partners to get out there and promote ex all the great work that is being done. And what EARN does, it, it requires, it, it supports the creation of these industry-based partnerships to uh, go out and, and develop the employees so to ensure that they have the skill sets that are needed to really advance the work of, of, our, of our economy. So again, as we look forward to, uh, to continue to implementing EARN, um, this aid, my agency will be the one that will answer whatever questions you have about it, and we look forward to that opportunity. But Mark, um, this is a great, a great company, and it harkens me back to my days of being in the good old United States Marine Corps to see all of these wonderful devices that are here, and, and I, for one, look forward to uh, partnerships being formed around on this company. Well, good afternoon. I, I would like to thank the governor and I'd like to thank you for providing this opportunity um, for us to come here to really see what our hard efforts are about. No matter what role we play in the process to making sure that these types of companies come to fruition, we should be proud that we are taking the initiative to making sure that our students as well as those individuals that need the retraining have the opportunity to do that. And I am very proud to have voted on the bill and to have been part of making it, it, it a success on the legislative side. So thank you. Um, thank you for making this possible and thank all of you for being here and doing the part that you do. Thank you, Senator. Any questions? Anyone? John? No? You good on earn? Okay. When do people start applying, Leonard? Um, we anticipate that people will start applying in the, applying in the fall. In the fall. Early fall. So the, and the training, and you're flexible whether the training's done at a community college or whether or at an industrial school or, or as you said, on Governor, site. As you said, this is truly industry led. So if, if the training pipeline for a particular company or a group of companies is based in, in the um, two year institutions, great. If it's the four year institutions, no problem. If it's a private uh, sector training institution, no problem. So whatever, wherever they can find uh, the, the training curriculum and the, and the instructors to, uh, to communicate what's needed for that workforce, uh, we, we will be all ears for that. Cool, great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for letting us interrupt your day. Thank you. Thanks for the cool stuff you do, too. Thank you. Thanks.